I'm going to start today by um, creating using one of the center shapes from my um, Medallion Master template number five. And I'm going to use this, this um, half round here to show you how to build that out. So basically, um, I'm using a very large piece of paper so I can get a large design in here to show you. And I'm just going to assume my halfway mark is somewhere right around here. And I'm just going to hold my stencil in place while I draw along um, the inside shape of this. And I just want to point out that on those half um, circle designs, there's a little nib there. So you definitely want to um, catch that so that you can line up the other half of, of the circle when you go down and flip this. So I'm kind of doing this just messy draft. Um, I am trying to use harder lines here so that you'll be able to see them on the paper, but I am using my mechanical pencil. So basically, once you have all of those lines marked in, you simply take the stencil and flip it, and you're going to be able to mark this line, match this line up with the edge of the stencil here, and you'll see how um, those very edges here meet and you simply just lie that right there on top to match it up and now I'm simply going to continue marking the rest of this uh, circle out and I'm being I'm trying to go fast here so I'm not really doing a good job along these little these little edges here but it's to show you so basically here you go here's your center design and obviously if you take your time doing this you'll your lines will connect here and you know I can just go in and either leave that and know that I'm going to outline it later so I don't need to draw in every single line um, and then of course I can erase all of my interior lines here so next I want to start building out my medallion um, and the process that I use is a very very natural and um, just spontaneous kind of um, method here and of course I've got all of the stencils here so I have use of all of them and I can easily switch off between which designs I want um, to build onto my next layer and I realize that um, that right from the beginning you won't necessarily have all of the stencils to work with so um, you can still work within the lines and the designs that are given to you in one template so I've decided that I'm going to use this design here, sorry, as my next layer. And now that I've got a center point um, from the markings on the on the half circle stencil, I'm going to take my tack and I'm going to place that right in the middle there. And I've got watercolor paper and then my foam core board right underneath it. So what I'm looking for here is. Um, the next layer that I can apply to what's already down on paper. So basically using this template I can see that because I can see through my my stencil that I can line this next design up right on top of those first petals. So that's what I'm gonna do and I don't need to use the registration marks to do that. I can simply space this directly in the middle of where I was before and I'm looking at, you know, this piece right here, you can see where it falls right in the center of, of the previous lines that are down there. So I continue around my medallion that I'm building here. And going on to the next layer, I'm going to be looking to change it up and to see what other design I have that fits on the next layer. And what we're doing right here is actually creating a very condensed design and I realize I'm off the uh, video here. So we're going to create a design where there is another element directly on top of the element that we're currently laying down and that's going to give us a very tight, a very tight and condensed complex design. Um, and this is just one way that you can use the stencils. So I'll be showing you additional ways where you can create very open designs as well. So here's, here's our next design line. So now we've got these little petals poking out here and I'm just going to refer to everything as a petal. I don't know why. 
um, what I could do now is I could actually um, place this here and see what I could do is actually go in between those with another layer of that petal but which would create you know additional petals in, in these areas too but I'm going to change up my template and this is where you know you have the ability to get really creative in in your design so I'm going to go with this template and I'm going to start with my with just my pointy ends here and when I reposition this I can see that okay I've got some I've got one design that's falling directly in the middle and then the other designs are a little bit higher than that so I think I'm just going to start that way and I'm going to line my my stencil up again eyeballing it where this is going to be in the center of that circle that's that's underneath it and I'm just going to draw enough of the line in to connect right on top of those um, that last layer So again, we're working on a, a very dense, um, a dense design where we're creating layer upon layer in every position that we can, that we can, um, that we can build into. So I'm finishing this layer. And now I'm thinking about, okay, what do I want to do on top of that? Well, let me look and see what else I have on this um, template. And here I see that I'm not quite in the right position here. These, these lines can't touch this one yet. So I'm going to move on to another template. And I'm going to see what I, what I can fit in there that might, um, that might work. And so I'm going to go over to my um, Medallion Master 3 and I'm going to look in this row to see what fits from here. And basically, I'm still in a position where I need to find something to put on that next row. So what I'm going to do is basically um, create my next layer using my registration marks. So this is easy enough to do. So what I'm going to do is I decide that I want to use this size here, not the one that's at the same level as these others. So I'm going to center the template right here. I'm going to draw my I'm going to draw my next um, design line here. And I'm going to mark my registration points. So you can see the registration points are up here and I'm going to mark those registration points and then use those to create this layer of my design. So as you go around you want to continue marking that registration point and and rotating so that you can then draw the next line. So this is how um, you go about creating the next layer of design if you don't have any um, any design lines that that will fit right away and build off of that that last line of design so here and this is probably the only time I'm going to need to use those registration marks as I go around the circle oops don't forget to put your registration mark And you can see that you can see that these are these are touching when they come together. So the registration mark is what allows you to um, to line that up. And this is a really really nice. Um, technique to do with the radio on or listening to your favorite music. I just kind of zone out and I just keep going around in circles here to see, you know, what 
what I can build out. And as you start to get the feel of how the templates work and how the rotation design works, um, you can really get more adventurous in, in your designs and um, that's half the fun of it. So you can start these designs in so many different ways that with, you know, with circles, with um, registration marks, with some of the shapes that I've provided and um, or even shapes that you already have at home. So if you if you have a um, some other stamp or stencil that you want to start using as your center point, absolutely do that. And this is to this enhances what you've already got to use as tools. So as you go and you build out um, your design, you know you can come back and create something using another tool that you have in the center um, so that the design options are really limitless. So now that I've got this layer on here I'm going to think about what I want to put on the next layer and I may want to do some circles. And Let me just see where these fall. And actually I think it might be a nice detail to put a circle right in between this, these last layers so I'm just going to throw that in there right there. However, you could leave it completely open if you want to design or um, tangle in that space. So it's all completely up to you how you want to build out your design and the details within them. So I'm just going to throw this down as an additional um, design element. And if I had space at that at that level, I would probably put all three and continue that around um, so that I had an entire row of beads to um, to work with. So here I finished my my row of circles here and now I'm going to kind of move on to see what else I want to create on my next my next level and one of the things that I'm finding is that if you get if you get stuck in a certain position and you don't have the next layer to to apply you can always add a circle layer and start building out on top of that in addition what you can also do is use the um, Medallion Master Template 7 and you know this is a great place to because you have the ability to create your own pivot point because of the stacked markings that are here I could say you know what I think I want my I want that nice big pointy end to start right here above these two circles and all I need to do is look at you know the the template and where my center mark is and which which marking fits right in there that that will allow me to position it and um, and draw in that design line so here I'm just going to add the tip of these um, the tip of these and I'm doing it so basically you could run into a position here where where the design is um, you're you're going to be placing them really close together if you go and touch you know layer it on each peak that you've created here you can always change it up and do every other and I think at this point that's probably a good idea just because I don't want those those um, crashing into each other basically so this is what I'm going to do and then you'll find that on my next layer there will be designs that will fit in between that area now to give me more ability to um, to build out design inside of that inside of that space now the templates can be used completely to build out your design, but but what I want 
these to do for you is to actually just provide you with a baseline so that you can start, you know, adding your own design lines, you know, doing some freeform um, design lines and it's these are to be used more as just tools to help you get to that point where you can start adding things of your own. Of course you can always continue to build out these designs um, strictly by using the by using all the templates. Um, and I like to I like to continue here kind of um, auditioning what's going on, what I can find to lay at the next level. And um, these these banner these banner pieces are, are kind of interesting too. Um, you can use just the interior mark or you can use both or just the exterior mark here. Um, so these are kind of fun to throw in at different places. So here I can see that um, if I center this over the opposite peaks where I laid the diamond, um, I can actually fit this right in here and and looking at this template the interior lines here come right to the edge of the previous mark here so I'm kind of taking advantage of that and I'm just building right off of it and then at the same time I'm gonna use my outside lines here to add that additional piece so as you can see I could actually you know come in here and erase this part so that this section here in this area looks like it's all filled along with that tab but the more lines you know I get excited the more lines I have and how I can section everything so um, so again I'm just going to continue here utilizing that line um, to line up my new marks from this banner tab and again you don't have to use both those lines And I'm literally lining up the center of things um, in order to use this design element right here. So it's that easy just continue to add layers see what fits in if it if nothing fits in then you draw a circle and you start creating another layer on top of that um, a couple of interesting pieces on these templates are designs that lay on the on the underside of um, of some of these lines so I'll show you how to use that And here we are at our last piece, and so now you can see what we've created. Um, we've got alternate designs going here, and it just adds to the intensity and complexity of that design. Um, unfortunately, my recorder stopped in the middle of what I was doing, and I didn't even hear it shut off. So. Um, where I am is a couple of levels beyond where I left off in the uh, the first part of the video. So, actually, I want to I want to explain what I did. So, basically, in the the last part of the video, you saw that I was working my way around the uh, medallion using using the template. Um, this will be template number four. So, I had actually. Um, worked my way around the template and added those what look like M's and little banner flags there. So after I'd made my way through um, the entire circle, what I did was created now just a straight circle line that was going to, um, to go through and catch like just behind the tip of, of that design. So what I did was I just used the, um, the half inch circle marker that is on the right hand side of the template and I just found um, the line that I was comfortable using and went around and in between each one of the um, 
each one of the M's, you know, and the triangles, I just kind of, um, you know, use the pencil to mark in that uh, line. And I did that throughout the entire circle. So what I started doing um, after that was using a different template to create um, an additional kind of strange looking line that's going on there. And the template that I'm using is the um, Medallion Master number three. And what I'm doing is using this line here to create just this wavy looking mark um, around the circle. But what I'm doing is because um, I didn't want to place this in the center of my of my design, so instead I'm, I'm working it so that I've tilted this and that the edge of this design is coming right down at the center of that M. So this is what I'm doing and, and I've started creating those waves, wave pattern around. So I think you can see that. So basically, I'm just going to continue doing that, and to finish this up, and again, so I'm lining up the center of that line with, um, in the center of the M, and I'm leaving a little bit of space, and again, I'm following the upper edge of this, of this area and working my way around the circle. And I might be out of the, uh, out of the video here now. So, um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I know it's a little hard to see the, um, the pencil marks, but I'm trying to keep them dark. And I'm not worrying that, that I'm not connecting those two lines right now. I just want to be able to place the centers of them right above that that M shape. So I've got a few more here to go. And one more. And I have to keep talking so I might just ramble on just so my video doesn't shut off on me. So what I've done now is I've created this wavy line around the outside and all I'm going to do is, uh, well I, I have options, I can actually do a few different things. So if I wanted to I could use my straight edge and actually line the straight edge up with the, my center um, pivot point and actually draw a line directly down to that, that slice above it. And this would section off all these pieces, and it could look kind of kind of cool if um, if I wanted to do that on both ends. So I think you can see that um, it would create a split in these in these um, lines right here. So it's completely up to you. You can you can just simply connect these lines here and leave this area all as one section that you can then go in and detail with, um, with some line drawing or doodling. So it's completely up to you and that's a lot of what this process is, is um, you know, seeing the next piece that you can lay down and how you want to play with that. I think I'm going to go through and I'm going to break those lines right there because I really like how that looks. But then I'm also going to be thinking about what I can then place after that so um, I'm looking at uh, this um, element again on Medallion Master 1. So I'm going to see if I can work that now into my next layer. And I've got my tack here. And what I can see right now is that this hump um, will fit right here in the valley of where those are. Or I could actually just, it'll touch the tops of these peaks as well so I could place it there but I'd only get that little that little piece. Um, while I've got this template I'm just going to check out what the pointed edge would look like and basically I could create a really nice um, a really nice um, peak off of these two these two peaks right here. So it's all about 
you know, choices and options and you can do whatever you choose to do. I think for at this time, I'm actually just going to use this peak, which is the one that um, I'm going to capture part of it. So you can see, I'm just going to add that peak in between those, those um, valleys. So I'm going to quickly go around and do that for all of those pieces. And again, we laid um, we laid this design out sort of in a um, we've got every other design here on this level is something is different. So that just adds additional interest to um, to what we're creating, and it changes up things a little bit. So that's always fun. So I'm just gonna plug these in quickly so that I can focus on my next layer. And I don't know if you're outside of the video area, if you can see me doing this, okay. And I, again, I know it's hard with the pencil, um, but you can kind of get my drift, what I'm, what I'm actually doing here. So basically, that's my next layer. And I'm going to wait, and I'm going to go back in and draw these additional lines in after the fact. Um, so here, now, let's see, I'm looking for my next layer, find something interesting, and I could actually be doing that. So what I'm looking at now is that this, um, this layer right here would sit on top of that, and it would be kind of interesting. So I could actually put that right here, and I'm thinking I might do that because I really like how I think that's going to look. And there's one thing to, to make note of when obviously this tack is only is really skinny and the hole that it's um, that we're using as our pivot point there's a little bit of movement there. So what I tend to do as I draw these out is I pull either pull the template away from the tack or I push it towards the tack. So that way I just remember how I'm doing it and I can do it consistently so that um, so that I keep all those lines in the same place. But what's important to show you right here right now is that if I pull the template back towards the tack, that line actually sits right on top of those peaks. So that's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm pulling my template back that way and um, what I'm going to do here is actually follow the lower the lower edge of this. So I'm actually going to capture that the pointy inserted part right there and that may be the that may be the line that you prefer um, but just so you know like these these little tricks that either pull the tack towards you or push it away from you and then sometimes it can actually help you in the placement of your lines so again I'm going to follow the lower edge here of the cut and it's going to land right on top of that of that peak. So I'm going to continue placing this one. And I'll have to chat while I'm doing it because I'm afraid the video camera is going to go off again. So you can you can kind of see where we're going. So th this is an, an ongoing process. I could stop whenever I want to stop or I could continue whenever, you know, and just keep going to see how far I can build out a design. And based on where you started and what you laid down in between these layers, yours is, it's going to come out different every time. So I think that's a lot of the fun that you can have with these templates. And um, every, so far, every one that I've done, and I've done a bunch, have um, all been different. And I like that. I like the spontaneity, spontaneity of it all. So again, here's my last one. And I followed the inside line and I pushed my template towards the tack because that connection right there would get me right on top of those peaks, right in there exactly. So as you can see, this is a pretty cool uh, medallion and I am going to um, use my 
my seven template here. And I'm going to do this because I can place this anywhere behind. And I'm going to actually show you the the um, this cone this cone shape that I like to use. So this is basically I consider this to look like a a unicorn's horn or a shell when um, when I finish it up. So I want to show you how I use this. And again, this template, because it has multiple pivot lines for you to choose from, I can decide exactly where I want to place that, where I want to place that design, whether I want it up here, whether I want it down here, just a little bit poking out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this right behind my, my pointy peaks right here. And that way it will kind of go every other. And I'll start this so you can see it. And I'm thinking that I would like this to come out, you know, beyond these areas here. And I think that would look really cool. So I'm just going to place my, my pivot point somewhere right around here. And what I'm going to do is mark out all these lines, the stencil lines, not crossing over that peak. So remember, I want that to lay kind of behind the other one. And this one, I may run into that tiny tip right there. So this is going to stay in position as I, as I rotate around um, my medallion. But I want to show you what I do with this. So once I have these laid out, I kind of just come in with my pencil and I create a line that connects and kind of goes in a little bit. Um, so that I can create the look of that shell or a horn of some sort. Um, and of course, you know, this, it's up to you. You could find something completely different that you want to, that you want to do, um, with this stencil. And this was just kind of my idea for it. And so you can go in here and work the shadows or work the colors to give you, um, that more three dimensional look. So, I thought it was a pretty cool little addition and I'm going to have fun with that. So I am going to finish off these um, horns around the outside of my design and that will be the, that will be the design that I um, stop with for now. I'll so now I'm back and I finished um, creating my pinwheel effect in the center of my, of my design and I think I'm ready to start adding some color to this. So. Um, I'm going to pull out some of my um, favorite tools, and these are Crayola Super Tips. They're water, um, they're washable markers by Crayola, and um, I'm going to use these along with a, um, a water brush that I have, and um, probably I may decide I want to do a little line work, so I'm going to use my my. Um, probably my smallest, um, the size small and the extra small of the pit, pit pens um, to kind of go in and add some detail with that. So I'll meet you back here with um, these tools and we'll get started. So one of the ways that I found that I like to um, get in and start working on color on these medallions is by using these, um, these Crayola washable markers and they kind of act like um, like watercolors, and they're a lot of fun to play with, and, and I enjoy using it because I feel like I can position my color um, where I want it, and then kind of blend it out from there. So um, another another technique that I like using is um, I found that if I lay color first without going in and outlining initially that I can come back in and make it look very sketchy in, in the look and feel of my, of my outlines. So, of course, you can get very completely different um, look and feels by using, you know, a heavy outline as opposed to doing something with watercolor in a very sketchy line. And this is kind of what I prefer, so I'm going to start creating with that um, intention in mind. And I... I also have some um, some neo color uh, pastels as well to use. So I'll see what I like to how everything kind of feels for me, and and um, see 
which one I like better. So um, additionally, I also have a, a palette um, over here that I'm going to be using that I actually can add some water to. I do have a, a bucket of water here as well um, and a, a couple of watercolor brushes just in case I need to add a little bit more water because sometimes in the um, sometimes in the water brushes the water doesn't come down as quickly as I want it to so um, I may need to, to use that but I'll use my palette over here to actually draw my marker out on and then I can add water to it and pick it up that way as well so I don't necessarily need to um, need to draw the marker onto the paper first. I, I don't need to, to do that first. So um, what I like to do though is, is I like to kind of place the, um, the color so that it's on the most of the upper edge of my design and then I like to let it kind of bleed out um, and thin out towards the center. So I like to keep the edges um, with more color on them, so if that made any sense. Um, I am not a watercolorist, I'm actually a pretty messy painter, so, um, so I may shock you in my methods here. Um, and I don't, I don't necessarily find it like I need to reach all of the lines and color exactly within the lines, however I would like to be neater than that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of sitting away from, from the medallion here as I start to paint it out so I don't get in the, uh, in the actual footage. So um, this is kind of my, my problem here. So anyways, what I'm going to do is um, I'm literally taking the color right off of the palette from the markers that I started with. And, you know, I'm just kind of adding more color towards the upper edges. And then what I can do is come in with, um, just get rid of all the color on that paintbrush and come in with um, water just to kind of blend it in a little bit. It's hard to see that working actually from this perspective. But anyway, um, these are washable, washable uh, markers and you know, you don't have to use these. You can go straight to your palette of watercolor paints. And, um, but this is kind of the look I'm going for. I like that softer, softer effect like the watercolors. And, um, and then I can go in and actually erase a lot of the pencil marking back so that, um, so that I don't see it as much when I go in to actually, um, sketchy outline my my shapes so this is the technique that I'm going to be working and I may stop and and you know um, stop here and there but for the most part this is what I'm going to be doing so I'm going to do a little bit of this so you can see it and um, then I'll come back to you and show you kind of how I finish up my medallion in the end by end adding um, additional line work. I wanted to um, come back to you after I had painted this all in um, and I did this using using both my um, Crayola water water based and um, washable markers as well as using um, some of the Neo Color and what I had done is actually used my palette and um, used some of the crayon and some of the ink and put it out on my palette and then used a regular watercolor brush to to pick up the color and to um, to fill in the areas and I really love the look of the watercolor and um, just how soft and everything the colors are and what I've done is I've intentionally left this area white and I loved the way these little um, these little horns on the top here looked. So I kind of left them mostly white, but I just went in and hit them with a little bit of the blue um, so that I could create a little bit of shading on them. And generally when I do, when I do paint in, um, I try to keep color heavier on one side than the other. And sometimes that is like the outside layer where I'd like to see the color concentrated on the very ends of things, but um, but also 
I do it slightly off the side so that I can use that kind of five o'clock shadow, um, um, you know, thought process or philosophy in order to get my shadowing in. So as you can see, everything's been done like super light. And because I, I added um, a little more pressure on my, on my pencil lines when I was doing, um, doing these originally so I could show you and I knew it was going to be hard to catch those pencil lines in the demo. Um, I'm just going to go back over some of this and just erase a little bit. Um, I realized that, you know, there'll be places where I might start taking off some of the watercolor. Um, but I just really want to kind of minimize a lot of that extra heavy penciling because I want to go back in with my, with my um, pit pen to be able to add those sketchy, sketchy gray-black lines that, that I really like. So I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to take off all of the lines here, just in the essence of time, I want to be able to show you what I'm doing. So I, I will go in and, and erase some of that. Normally, my process is not to use it so heavy-handedly, and that way, um, that way, you know, it's, it is more light after I apply the paint. So basically, with my extra um, small pit pen here, um, what I like to do is go in and kind of work around these edges and as light as I can and when I do that I kind of allow myself to let the pen bounce off of the page so that it allows me to get that kind of dotted and somehow sketchy kind of look that way so what I'll do is I'll I'll try to um, try to keep some lines like connected and then I'll, I'll allow them to break and I try to change up the weight of the of the line and not do it exactly the same as I go around because I want it to look hand done and I want it to look a little sketchy. So my next step here is to clean up some of the other um, some of the other pencil lines and additionally go and erase any of my any of my um, yes of the registration marks that are still hanging out here and then um, wh what I would normally do is I just keep on creating medallions off of the same page and overlap them and, and see um, how I can build them out. So there are, there are plenty of different uses um, for this kind of design. If you don't want to design on such a large piece of paper, you can absolutely design within a journal. And again, as I showed earlier, um, the accordion journals are really fun to create in um, and I've got kind of all different scales going on in here and additional details that I'm going to go in and add and then I've got the entire back side of this to create additional um, additional medallions on too so I love this type of format to work in but I definitely love being able to um, stretch out on a larger piece of paper and start working that. So stay tuned for more demos. Um, I'm going to be building lots of medallions and I'm going to do them um, on deli paper. I'm going to do them on craft paper and you know anywhere that that I can find a, a different um, application I'm going to try that. So thanks for stopping by.